is my first location. This is one of the red light areas where the Singapore government has tolerated the sex industry. It's also known for its traditional foods. Sex work is legal in Singapore, yet there's rampant illegal sex workers too. Anyone can get a 30-day visa and go back to their homeland. Women and girls come and go from the Asian hinterland, China, Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, also India, but I've never painted an Indian sex worker in Singapore. They come to earn the Singapore dollar. Being based in Singapore, I'm able to work there more consistently. The whole venture began on, began on an impulse, bringing my paints there. I didn't know what I was going to do. The pimp began bringing me women to paint. The crowds gathered. I watched the maturation of the work as some of the people came to watch me night after night. There was a development in ideas of aesthetic and artistic dialogue. Also, by creating oil paintings of people who are not usually noticed, a range of issues of class and social stigma has, have surfaced. Singapore is small, yet many Singaporeans never go to Geelong. Several Singaporeans have asked me to take them there. At first, the pimp was bringing me beautiful women, worthy of painting. The crowd also comes up with their offerings as to whom I should paint. They compare the looks of women to Chinese soap opera stars. If I wanted to paint one of the Bangladesh foreign workers, the pimp would be angry and he would make hostile and derogatory statements. They didn't deserve to be painted. Now they're bringing me such people as the bathroom director because of his face. They no longer see only the cliche idea of beauty. Once the model is posing, they tell him or her to stop moving. You're supposed to be looking over there. They understand what I need. The bathroom director has a table besides the bathroom collecting 10 cents, yet he never cleans the bathroom. The crowd fixes him up before he poses. I have a look at him. The neighborhood gets excited about the work. He's one of their own. Issues of class and social stigma illuminated early, beginning with all the derogatory comments made to the Bangladesh workers while I was painting them. In Singapore, the national newspaper, the Straits Times, wrote an article about these events. One of the headlines read, I understand if they draw landscapes or beautiful objects, but why ugly people and drunkards? If you gave me the painting, I also don't want. I made a direct response to this article with another painting I did in the studio. I found the darkest foreign worker I could, Tamil from Malaysia, and asked him to pose. He was a construction worker on site at my university campus. He had heard about the nude models in my figure drawing class, that's news all over campus in Singapore, and I wanted him in a, the most provocative pose possible. At first he was reluctant, saying, um, I shy ma'am, I take my shirt off, but that's all. I was paying him, of course, and he, he only had to lie there while I paint. When he first began to pose, he said everything he thought I wanted to hear. He loved Singapore, he loved his job. By the time he finished his painting, he broke up with his girlfriend. He was trying to get a visa to Spain. I watched the barriers in his mind break down through the painting process. He never had a meaningful conversation with a white woman before. And by talking to him, just like anyone else, he began to see the structures that separated us are not real, but man-made. I exhibited this painting in Singapore, and it got the startled reactions I anticipated. Linking sexuality, sensuality, and foreign workers in the same piece, some female so Singaporeans told me this painting was frightening. The work has become an informal art education. As people watch my process and discussing the paintings, Becoming familiar with the process, a dialogue has begun about the drawings and painting quite openly. They say which one they like, what's wrong with it, what, what they don't like, why. Some of the older Chinese men were educated in Singapore in Chinese language and at that time were given some traditional art education. It's these men that can relate to the line drawing with the brush.
That was all lost in Singapore. The students now know very little about their artistic traditions. Singapore is just now trying to remedy this situation with a blast of art education. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Besides the dialogue about art, they do joke around a lot. <laughs> and it can be pretty funny. One night while I'm painting, they were telling the sex worker, if she wants to finish early, don't worry. She doesn't have to work that hard. Just give a little scream and he'll be so excited, it'll all be over. So, and you know, I'm trying to paint while all this is going on. I began to painting with the heads. I did the painting, painted heads first, and then I moved on to doing the drawings. The drawings are, are more of the whole body. Yeah, and here's some of the guys. This is Lisa. Oh, this is Lisa. <laughs> Here's Lisa another night. Here's one of the drawings. Actually, the body is more expressive than the face. I began to get them to sign the front of the paintings. They were really amazed. But it's about inviting them to have a greater part, part of the painting. Even though there's a possibility they might not be signing their true name. The next steps in Geelong, I'm getting my students involved. They come and they draw and they paint along with me. They start photographing. We, we take over the whole street. Here's Lisa in performance. Here's Lisa again. I, I said it was a performance. Here's Jimmy. And this is Zen. Here's a painting of Zen I did in the studio. It's about two meters high. I wanted her doing something. She makes her own decisions. She's her own boss. Meanwhile, I put her on the ultramarine robe of the Virgin Mary. But the heavenly light is artificial and the lily's under the couch. Okay, this one is about consumerism, materialism. It's, it's also two meters in height. This is about the role of technology. It's also another two meters. 